So this diagram shows a small switch network and each of these switches, S1, 2 and 3, has learnt the MAC addresses A, B, C and D and it learns which ports they're on. But depending on which switch you are, where you are in the network, you will have a different view of the network and therefore which port you need to send to get a particular MAC address. So for example, if you're trying to send to uh, device D then and you're on switch S2, then it has to come out of port 3, which means go up towards switch S1. So you can see that this is a table which is built up inside each of the switches so that every time it receives a frame, it knows where to send it on. Now that's all very smart. Um, the question then is, how does this work? How do the switches build these tables? You don't have to actually log into the switches and configure them. It's quite clever. It's done as a side effect of the forwarding of the frames. And what happens is, any time a frame comes in, it needs to look at the destination address to work out where to send it to. But it also looks at the source address and learns that that source address came in on a particular port. So if the frame came in and its source of MAC address was X and it came in on port Y, then it learns that MAC address X must be connected to port Y. And those learned MAC addresses and ports are added to the MAC address table, which is also known as the bridge forwarding table. So later on, when another frame comes in on a different port maybe, which has a destination MAC address of X, it can find it in the table and it, therefore it knows it needs to send it out of port Y because that's where it saw MAC address X coming in from. And if the MAC address isn't in the MAC address table, then it has to be sent out on all ports. So that's how things work when the switch first powers up. Its forwarding table is empty, so whenever a frame comes in, it will have to send that frame out to all destinations, but eventually it will start learning the MAC addresses of other devices as every time a device sends a frame, it will see the source MAC address. It will add it to the table and therefore going forward, it will know where to send the frames. So what you will find that is that if you take, say, a PC and connect it directly to a switch port, then there will only be one MAC address visible through that switch port. It's the PC's MAC address. But if the switch is connected in turn to another switch or to a hub or to a wireless access point or some device that can provide access to multiple MAC addresses, then the switch's forwarding table will show multiple MAC addresses all associated with that same port. And that's perfectly normal of the way that the switch network works. These MAC address entries may expire after a certain amount of time. If the MAC address hasn't been seen for a while, then to avoid the table becoming full, it may expire that entry. And these MAC address tables may even be forced out if the switch runs out of space in its forwarding table. So if it needs to learn a new MAC address and there are no spare slots in the forwarding table, it will have to kick out an old entry to be able to make space for it. Now, if you have a managed switch, you will be able to log into the switch and inspect the forwarding table and see all of the port to MAC address mappings that it's learned.